Very good morning to you and thanks for joining us on uh, The Breakfast. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. Here in Lagos, it's a rainy day and that means it's cold and that means a lot of people may be late for work today. And especially here on the island, uh, a lot of places are, are flooded and all that. But uh, we thank God for small mercies. Anytime it rains, everybody just says, oh, thank God, because the place will be a bit cooler than it has always been. This is a very, very hot period, and we are hoping that you are hydrating yourself enough uh, to be sure uh, that you have enough water in your body to make sure you survive uh, these uh, trying times. Uh, well, it's a very, very wonderful day. It's a Tuesday morning, and uh, we're glad to know that you are there and you woke up with us. We're hoping that we're going to make the best of today. On the program this morning, we're going to be looking at some very hot topics. The first one is going to be that Nigeria is not mature for state police, that's according to IGP. And the second hot topic will be Tinubu unveils African Counterterrorism Summit. Uh, very, very interesting things. Uh, to, this morning it's uh, all about security. Of course, we're going to have uh, the top trending issues, or things that caught our attention in the course of the last 24 hours. Then we also will have off the press where we look at uh, the headlines from our national dailies. Uh, first of all, uh, let's see what we can. Let's take a short break and we'll be back in a moment. Technology, like art, is a soaring exercise of the human imagination. That's the quote of the day. Technology, like art, is a soaring exercise of the human imagination. That is according to Daniel Bell. Technology, like art, is soaring. You know, technology um, comes from imagination. Art also comes from imagination. Two of them work together, and so. Um, if you want to innovate, if you want to create, if you want to invent, you have to be imaginative enough and positively too to be able to create what you need to create, be it in the art or uh, you want to uh, do something in technology, whatever it is, the power of imagination cannot be overemphasized. And uh, so many people say uh, that what you imagine is what you become. So there is so much power in what you think inside of you. Even the good book says that it is not what goes into your you that uh, makes you become a good person or a bad person, but what comes out of you. So if you have something in your imagination that is good enough, you're going to create something good. If you have something that is bad, you're going to create something bad. But the bottom line is there is power in imagination. So think about what you can imagine. Or think about what you can do from just your thoughts. And you will know that you will try your best to filter the kind of thoughts that you have all the time. Well, uh, today we're going to be looking at uh, the first uh, top trending issue uh, on our minds is that uh, FCCPC shot Chinese supermarket over claims of discrimination against Nigerians. Officials of the Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Commission, FCCPC, has sealed up an Abuja-based Chinese supermarket situated at the China General Chamber of Commons. The FCCPC officials shot the supermarket when they stormed the premises on Monday. The commission's officials sealed up the place after interrogating Nigerian workers at the supermarket. Earlier on Sunday, Nigerians had expressed outrage over a discriminatory policy implemented by the Chinese supermarket, which restricted entry exclusively to its citizens and barred Nigerians. The facility manager of the complex, Shaibu Sanusi, confirmed that Nigerians from outside the complex do not shop, but Nigerians within can access it. While the supermarket remains shut, the Consumer Protection Agency seems to believe that some people are hiding inside in a bid to avoid confrontation with the agency. I think that's a very laudable move. Why would you come and do appetite in Nigeria, you know? Uh, you're making some people, you're, you're showing that you are, is it because you're showing that you are superior or uh, why are you making it exclusive? And as the law has said, um, it is a possibility that uh, there are people inside that do not want to be 
confronted by the law and uh, that's why they're sealing it. It's, it's discriminatory and it's not good. We're talking about, uh, we're, we're trying to say no to discrimination, we're trying to say no to uh, race, racism, we're trying to say no to a lot of other vices that are not good for humanity. And then you're coming into Nigeria, our Nigeria, and having a shop that a Nigerian cannot shop inside. Okay, so consumer protection, I thank you for, very much for that. We are also uh, calling you to protect other customers as well uh, that may be in trouble. We, we remember the trouble of uh, the, the, the tomato reviewer uh, that is still in court right now. I don't know what has become of that lady right now. I haven't had uh, so much information about it. But if you want to rise to the occasion, rise to every occasion, um, this thing you've done about the Chinese company, it's, it's very laudable, we like it, but uh, they are not the only ones that are culprits. Even our Nigerian brothers do so many things that uh, we want you to step in. Don't wait for us to come and complain to you. Sometimes you see something on the social media, you try to investigate, you try to see what you need to do. Some people may not even have access to you, may not even know how to go about it coming to you. But we see these things every day and we suffer at the hands of service providers of any kind. And we need you to be as active as you have begun to be active right now. Very laudable thing. We thank you for, for that. Uh, Nigerian Corps NSCDC operatives rescued 10 human trafficking victims in Abuja. That's a second top trending. No fewer than 10 victims of human trafficking have been intercepted at the Zuba Motor Park in Abuja by the Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps, NSCDC. This was contained in a statement by Samuel Doko, spokesperson, NC, NSCDC FCT Command on Monday, noting that the victims were arrested following a tip-off of their return from MENA, where they had gone to process their international passports as directed by their sponsor. Idoko asserted that the rescued victims aged between 24 and 34 comprised of one male and nine females who all claimed to be indigents of Ondo State. He added that they were being sponsored for illegal migration abo abroad. He stated that the victims had been handed over to the National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons, NAPTIP, by NSCDC Commandant Olushola Odumosu. The victims were accosted at Zuba Motor Park, Abuja, by officers of the command following a tip-off of their return from MENA, where they had gone to process their international passports as directed by their sponsor. The victims confessed to have paid 80,000 naira to facilitate the procurement of the international passport. They also confessed to being promised migration abroad to undertake ready-made jobs, especially in North America and Canada by a yet-to-be-identified sponsor who, according to them, resides in Okitipukwa, Ondo State. Mm. It's very interesting. Uh, some, sometimes when they call these people victims, I just wonder uh, what made them victims. Some of these people, uh, on their own, they, they seek for these people that will take them abroad, thinking that they are going to... I know that the people who are their sponsors most times uh, just sweet talk them into uh, becoming or trying to move make this move to uh, move, make this move abroad so that they can get greener pastures but there are so many things um, inside it a lot of people will be stowaways a lot of people will voluntarily become slaves just to get uh, overseas uh, that's all their life dream had been to go overseas and then when you're caught uh, you become a victim and then the, the, the state will only be prosecuting the people who who accepted you or sweet talked you into doing what you are going to do, you want to do right now i think these people should also have some kind of penalty how would you pay 80000 naira to become a slave how would you pay 80000 naira to be trafficked out of this country and then you go scot free when you are caught that something should be done to these people as well to serve as a deterrent but I think also the, the, the awareness should be created even more than it is being created now. NAPTIB, you're doing a lot of things, you're, you're, you're doing a lot as it is, but it's not enough. National Orientation Agency and all the agencies that are concerned about this. I remember in the 80s where we had an advert of Andrews, where are you going? Everybody wanted to check out of Nigeria and Andrew wanted to go as well. That was the character in that advertorial. And someone held him back and said, we are going to build our country together. So let's make these jobs that they want to go and 
take abroad available in Nigeria. Let's make the conditions more conducive in Nigeria. Let's make security um, top-notch in Nigeria and a lot of other things. The reasons, sometimes flimsy reasons, that people uh, travel abroad or allow this, themselves to be trafficked. Well, NAPTIP, great job, but let's do more to educate our people so that they get to know the dangers of having to traffic themselves, as it were, uh, to go outside just because someone promised them a job and just because they want to go abroad. Let us make Nigerians begin to feel pride in their country and also have the uh, wherewithal to take care of themselves as, as long as they are in Nigeria. Okay, so great job, Naptip. Uh, Pro-Wiki lawmakers Trip Fubara's part to appoint local government caretakers. Uh, that's uh, at the next uh, top trending issue. The River State House of Assembly on Monday passed the River State Local Government Amendment Bill into law by overriding the assent of Governor Siminalaye Fubara. The new law, among others, stripped the governor of the power to appoint caretaker committees for local government areas. It also makes it mandatory for River State Independent Electoral Commission to conduct elections before the expiration of the tenure of local government chairman. The new law also provides that if local government elections cannot hold for any reason, the tenure of the sitting chairman would be extended by not longer than six months. This is the sixth time the House will be overriding the governor to enact laws. The House, led by its Speaker Martin Namawale, made the decision at its 159th legislative sitting held at the Assembly quarters in Port Harcourt. The decision of the Assembly was disclosed in a statement on Monday by the media aide to the Speaker, Martins Wuchuku, Wachuku. Rather. The Assembly had, on March 13, 2014, passed the Local Government Amendment Bill and forwarded the same to the Governor for his assent. Fubara, however, withheld his assent while the lawmakers threatened that they would go ahead to override him. The Assembly and the Governor had had a strained relationship since last year. After Fubara fell out with his predecessor and political godfather, Nyesom Wike, 27 members of the assembly, including the speaker, are loyal to Wike and attempted to impeach Fubara last October. The intervention by President Bola Tinubu doused the tension for a while, but recent events have indicated the peace agreement is over. In another development, the House also screened and confirmed nominees for the position of chairman and members of the Assembly Service Commission. Those screened and confirmed were Samson Wolu as chairman, Abinye Blessing Pepel, Mrs. Blessing Belema Derifaka, Mr. Baranen Robinson, and Madam Dokas Amos as members. Their statement recalled that the Assembly had on March 22, 2024, passed the River State Assembly Service Commission Amendment Bill into law wherein the House bequeathed back to itself the power to appoint the chairman and members of the Assembly Service Commission. Okay, a lot of us do not really understand what is going on in uh, River State. Um, this peace accord that was brokered by uh, the president, is it one-sided? Um, these people who are even making the laws and overriding the governor, uh, by the laws of Nigeria, are they even supposed to be in the assembly? I'm just asking these questions for people who know more to enlighten Nigerians. Uh, these are breakaway people from a party that hitherto didn't have any problem, except for the fact that the governor and his godfather, which is not recognized by law, uh, they're having problems and people loyal to him are doing what they're doing. And even his predecessor, that is the predecessor of the governor, is saying it openly that what he wants must work in a state that is an independent state and has a governor. And the law is quiet about this. Well, maybe our democracy is a peculiar kind of democracy that anybody can do and say anything and go scot-free depending on the, um, the position you hold. But as that now we should know that uh, power is transient as everybody says if you go to kogi state maybe you will find out uh, why i'm saying so uh, today the white lion may be in hiding uh, according to a lot of people that he's still in hiding some say that he has been arrested some say he's in hiding some say the aide de camp of the governor has been arrested and all this but bottom line is that power will not be held on to forever. So whatever you're doing now, think about poster posterity. 
I've always said that the most dangerous person is the man who thinks not of posterity because it's like man die go, woman born another. That's what we say in, uh, on the streets in Nigeria. So uh, that kind of mentality, it's very dangerous uh, for, for humanity because you're thinking about what you're going to leave behind when you go and that is your name. Nothing else that you're going to leave behind is your name. Will it be a good one or a bad one? So uh, what is happening in uh, River State is something that we do not know how it fits into our constitution, how it fits into our laws and all that, but it is happening. And when some of us express fears of uh, the, I will implement the peace accord because uh, out of respect for the president and all that, and then it has come to this point, we don't know what is happening. We do hope that River State will get it right, uh, whether the fault is from the governor or the fault is from his predecessor, Nelson Wike, whatever, whatever it is, we do hope that there will be peace in the state and a governor takes charge as a governor should and the House of Assembly does what they're supposed to do and hold the governor in check and not do things just because they want to fight and show who is boss because the people of Rivers will be the worst for it. Well, let's hope that River State will get it right, like I said. And um, that will be all on Top Trending. We'll just take a short break. When we return, we'll be looking at the papers and we'll see what made the headlines this morning. Stay with us.